So we've had the State of the Nation address. As one cartoonist put it, the nation is in a state. Somebody who's got to control the purse strings of that nation in a state is in Nene, Deputy Minister to Pravin Gordon, previously Deputy Minister to Trevor Manuel as well. Now in Nene is the guy who's got to answer the tough questions, got to deal with ratings agencies intent on downgrading us and generally make a very tight budget balance. Finance Minister Tlantlanene, you've had something of a baptism of fire in your first two weeks in office. I would, uh, I would say so, but uh, I think it's uh, traditional in this office. When uh, Minister Gordon came in, it was just at the onset of the uh, global economic uh, uh, crisis. And uh, as Minister Manuel would put it, uh, that uh, some people know when to leave their jobs and some people don't know when to uh, take up their jobs. Well, there we go. Yeah, the f former finance minister, Pravin Gordon, had the excuse of the global financial crisis to lean on for the five years of his tenure. You take over from him. You were his deputy of uh, finance, of course, in the, in the previous government. Um, you're inheriting much of what you've been part of for the last five years. Absolutely. And uh, I don't think it was an excuse, but it was the reality. And um, I think we're faced with new, new realities now that require new responses. And uh, I think we will live with challenges for the rest of our lives. What, 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 what are the new realities? I mean, the global financial crisis set up its own series of problems. But here we sit in South Africa in 2014. You talk about new realities. What are those? Look, uh, part of uh, those realities actually built on, um, on, on that situation because we actually are uh, um, not fully recovered. Um, you know, and uh, we have uh, seen a period of uh, low um, employment in the country, or to say high unemployment. Um, we also have had um, slow growth, and um, we've also seen um, challenges um, in uh, our mining sector. We've also seen um, uh, issues uh, that relate to the rest of, um, you know, labor unrest. Uh, but uh, it, it's been a number of, uh, of, the, of those challenges. Commodity prices also have actually taken a knock. In sure. We, however, we see all these things. We know what the problems are. It's how does this government respond to those problems? Look, uh, since uh, 20, I mean, actually since the beginning of this, <coughs> of the previous administration, uh, this government set about to put together a plan, or uh, a country's plan, a long-term vision, and. Uh, uh, practical and workable um, uh, interventions. So that plan is now in place. It has gone through and has been accepted by everyone, um, citizenry in general, uh, government, and, um, and you know the rest of uh, the national development plan. Though does have a high level of opposition from within Kosatu, from within the trade union movement, and we are seeing South Africa, certainly in the, the working class of South Africa, being torn apart now by a more radical union movement in the form of AMCU, which looks like it will achieve some success in the platinum belt. That success will breed further success. How realistic is the implementation of the national development plan when a large proportion of people in South Africa seem to disagree with it? I don't think it's correct. Uh, it's the correct characterization to say that it's got a l high level opposition from uh, the labor movement. Because in the first place, even the opposition from the labor movement had to do with uh, some sections of the of the NDP, and um, it's not like um, huge opposition. And uh, if you also look at um, the strides we have made in actually implementing some section of uh, sections of the um, NDP as we speak. And what they seek to achieve is what everybody wants. We're talking about um, <coughs> think, um, areas of intervention that talk to reducing the cost of doing business, and everybody agrees with that. We're talking about reducing the cost of living, particularly for the poor. We're talking about creating employment in order to alleviate poverty and to uh, get our people onto the mainstream uh, economy. We're talking about uh, infrastructure rollout that has benefited this country enormously. Uh, well, all of this is happening against a backdrop, though, Minister, of worsening data. We saw the downgrade in the outlook coming from Fitch. We saw Standard & Poor's downgrade South Africa's rating to one step away from junk bond status. The data is getting worse and worse and worse, and we keep talking and talking and talking. We don't seem to be closing that gap. I don't think it's only talking and talking, and as I said, its implementation is actually uh, being stepped up as we speak. If you look at uh, the amount of infrastructure that has been rolled out, uh, rolled out in the past five years, exceeds the infrastructure in, in this country that was rolled out in the past 20 years. 
that has made a significant and a huge impact on the lives of the people and actually in creating an environment that is conducive for the private sector also to come in. And as you have seen also with our <coughs> energy program, the IPPs, I uh, keep on saying that uh, we've seen <coughs> a tremendous amount of uh, uh, government working with business in something that is of mutual benefit to, uh, to both the public and the private sector and that being stepped up and a lot of money has gone into it. Three years going forward, we're actually looking at close to a trillion rands again going into that infrastructure, However, but with a particular we, we focus. We get closer, Minister, to ratings downgrade to junk bond status. All of these plans come to nil, don't they, if we I don't think they to come to. Money? I don't think they come to nil. I think they, they just presents us with an opportunity of actually stepping it up. Because if you look at, <coughs> as I said earlier, the areas of focus, um, I said, it doesn't matter how much um, our economy grows, if we actually haven't addressed the issue of energy, the economy will choke. And therefore, we need to focus on the critical areas um, without necessarily <coughs> chasing the numbers. And the numbers will actually tell once we have reached a point where, you know, and that's why the acceleration and the completion of Madupi is uh, the top of our agenda the proper sequencing also of uh, our entire energy mix because it's not only you know <coughs> um, um, uh, coal we also need to look at renewable energy and uh, that's why i'm saying the ipps have been a major success and um, the rollout of um, um, you know in unlocking the bottlenecks in the roads infrastructure the ports um, as, as we speak um, a number of our parastatals have actually put in money where it matters most and uh, we are seeing um, 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 a significant uh, investment going in that area and the consequences will um, actually show in um, uh, in due course we, we've seen the platinum sector held uh, held at bay for the last five months going on six months now there's been zero work being done in the platinum sector very little um, do you think that amku is a new force in the South African political landscape? Is it one that, uh, that we should be concerned about, considering the standoff that they've been so successful at creating in just one segment of South Africa's economy? I think one of the things I keep on saying about um, the situation in the um, uh, platinum uh, belt is that it also has brought into the fore some of the challenges that I think as a country we should have uh, um, uh, grappled with a long time, and um, including the migrant labor system, uh, because the problems are not just, because it's, it's about working conditions rather than the, the monetary value of what, uh, the, the, I mean, what AMCO has been demanding. And um, in, uh, this is, has been a concerted effort now by government to work in a coordinated fashion, coordinated fashion to move in into such areas, but even beyond those areas in order to actually avert a situation like that. Indeed, um, workers will always, uh, um, you know, uh, be agitated when it comes to um, 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 appealing uh, wage increases, but at the end of the day, as government, we have a broader uh, uh, responsibility towards uh, our economy, not only just the wages, but also to uh, look at, uh, at their working conditions in general. And if I may say, <coughs> one of the things that we've found working, which we might actually, uh, we, which we should actually pride ourselves of, is a, a, an industrial relations environment that has got um, mechanisms to be able to deal with this without Those necessarily... Those mechanisms haven't worked, Minister. We've had, uh, we've had a standoff for five and a half months. The it's cost the economy 1% of GDP. It's cost families in the Eastern Cape, families across Rustenburg. It's cost yeah. businesses their livelihoods. Yes. The system isn't working, Minister. If you, look at, if you look back, I think it's important to reflect on the history of this country. Had it been in the time when we didn't have the industrial relations in this place, there would have actually been dire consequences. We didn't have that now because we have... All the processes in place, they might take long, I agree, but you have processes in place where you have um, a, a, a first the negotiations, you move from negotiations to mediation, you move from mediation and uh, up to ar um, arbitration. All those things are mechanisms that are in place, whether people like it or not, but you also cannot um, uh, say you need to end this in a sh short a time. Everybody wants this uh, to end as uh, soon as possible, but the intransigence also if it arises, would cause that. But if you were actually to, Im to uh, look at where we were in the past, I would imagine you know yourself where we would be had it not been for those mechanisms. However, as finance minister, you, got, you, you control the country's purse strings. The dire consequences of a lack of action within the economy are devastating. The ratings agencies are watching us very closely. We are 
not even a hop, skip and a jump away from p potential calamity when it comes to the ratings agencies. Um, we, we need to be pulling together rather than pulling apart. Look, it's a, it requires all of us to work together, you, you are correct, and that is why everyone has to play a role. And part of uh, what uh, the ratings agencies raise as an issue uh, are some of the issues that uh, are within our, yeah, our control, but some of the issues that um, um, have actually um, um, contributed towards uh, slow economic growth have actually been outside of our control. And we focus a lot, we need to focus our energies on those that we have control over. And um, the issue of the, you know, uh, slowing global economy has also played uh, into this because if you know that, I mean, our major trade partners, trading partners have uh, always uh, have, have uh, been in a, on a, on a downward uh, a trend for a very long time and our refocus on actually the continent have actually began to, to bear fruit and you will see uh, how our exports into Africa are actually beginning to pick up but also trying to resolve our issues internally um, uh, would give us um, a more leverage in order to be able to... The Reserve Bank Governor Jill Marcus has warned us that the next move in interest rates is up. She's managed to hold off and the Monetary Policy Committee has held back uh, since January raising interest rates. Raising interest rates in a low growth environment where our global partners are also struggling to get growth. It, it feels like 2014 um, the ratings agencies, all of, or the World Bank, everybody's downgraded us to less than 2% growth this year. Those sort of growth rates surely cannot be acceptable in your book? Well, uh, whether they're, they're acceptable or not, um, it's, it's the reality and that is why we need to focus on what it is that can be done. And um, you mentioned the um, Reserve Bank's uh, 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 warning. Um, the, we coordinate our fiscal and monetary policy at a level that would actually not uh, unnecessarily, you know, stifle the economy. We're looking at the fiscal side of it, the Reserve Bank is looking at the monetary side of it. And as we do that, <coughs> we all have uh, a mandate to ensure that uh, each one does not unnecessarily compromise the other. And therefore, we're looking at, um, we've had uh, our counter uh, cyclical fiscal policy for the past few years, which have actually put us in good stead. Mm -hmm. And we've also allowed some of, um, you know, as you would know, the Reserve Bank is also concerned about the, our, the performance of our currency. That has actually served as a shock absorber, having a floating exchange rate. As you know, that we also have our inflation target, which uh, um, has actually kept the prices the, uh, um, um, stable at a rate that, that does not unfairly uh, disadvantage uh, the poor working class. We, we got a situation where a low growth environment, rising interest rates, a currency which has shown its vulnerability since the ratings downgrades. It's a, we're in a very vulnerable space right now, Minister. Twelve months from now, how do you see it? Well, that um, um, uh, is uh, explained by the fact that we are in, um, you know, at, at times we uh, would like to classify ourselves as, as, a, as a large economy. I mean, so those vulnerabilities actually also come from the size of our economy and our exposure also to uh, uh, the, the, the global environment. But um, I would want to believe that uh, our expedition of the implementation of, na of our national development plan, which I said um, earlier is not only a plan, is at implementation stage, is um, um, key to actually addressing most of our challenges as we move forward. Finance Minister Ntlantla Nene, thank you for your time. Ntlantla Nene, the new finance minister, has taken over from Pravin Gordon at yet another difficult segue for the South African economy. Lots to think about uh, to the finance minister and the team at the National Treasury. Thanks very much for that discussion this evening and thank you for watching as well. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, bye-bye.